Hey everyone, welcome to another video. I thought I'd make a video on how I climb low elo with Zed. Um, tips, tricks, gameplay overview, the level 1, the level 3, the level 6, things like that, and what to uh, look out for. So, level 1 on Zed, you want to keep away from the wave. Um, if the enemy has poke, they're stronger than you, such as, let's say, a Zerath, or a Velkaz, or in this case, Bear. That has his passive lightning. If we pause right here. Um, his passive is up right now. So when he hits this minion. It's going to shock with lightning if I'm near it. There's no need to be in that range. There's no need to take free damage. So just step away from the wave. Let it crash in your tower. Get as much CS as possible. Level 1. This is super important. Because. Your HP pool. Your HP pool is important. To keep high. At level one so that in level two and level three you can trade properly um, you're not going to be weak and that'll go into further explanation with that um, once you see me hit level three level two and so you notice I'm using the Q to get minions mainly right right here um, so this is what I'm talking about with the free damage right there's no need to be taking this and so I'm going to be queuing the minions to get them without trying to step up to them. And then at the same time, I'm going to be trying queuing and hitting Volley Bear. I'm trying to do two things at once and completely maximizing my queue, being super efficient. As you see here, hit the minion, hit Volley Bear. Best case scenario, right? Step away from the wave because my queue is down. And so right there, I want to point out something pretty important to notice. Um, so as you can see in the jungle, nothing's going on, right? There's nothing to rotate to, nothing to really look at. And as you see in the lane, these minions aren't weak enough for me to hit them. They're not weak enough for me to last hit them. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to grab them. Nothing for me to grab there. So the only thing I can possibly do is poke volley bear right that's the only thing i can do in lane he should realize this and you should back up a little bit realizing that the only thing i can do is actually damage him i realize that i can do that i go ahead throw out the w and hit him with two q's nice trade he's you know chunked by a third of his health already just from that one little play get minions you want to get as much CS as possible. 10 CS per minute is what we aim towards. Right? Constantly throwing out Qs. Constantly getting my CS with Qs. And hitting Volley Bear at the same time. Maximizing the efficiency of my Q. W out there. Just because you see his shield. His shield pops. Right? So I know if he hits me with his shield. I try and trade back. Nothing's going to happen, right? I'm going to lose this trade because he has a shield. I'm not going to hit his health. I'm going to hit his shield. He's going to hit my health. And I'm going to lose this trade. And so I back up, wait for the shield to expire, then go in with the two Qs. And he's chunked even more. I lose no HP for it. Get the minions. I back up. He takes a tower shot, which is super silly for him to take a tower shot right there. Wasting his abilities in lane, right? So I go in for the auto. Graves is coming in. And right here we blow his flash, which is awesome from a jungle pressure without even have to do much. He instantly flashes. Um, what you see later is Graves goes under a tower trying to get this kill right here and he dies. So it actually works out in the enemy favor on ours. What he should have done is right here, back up. We back up, we blew his flash. What he can do is just circle back, right? Circle back, gank again, he has no flash, free kill. But instead what he does is he chases, greeds under the tower. He doesn't realize the risk of the enemy jungler. Olaf. Olaf can come in from here. He can come in from here. He can come in from here. Right? There's three ways he can come in. We haven't seen him. Very possible that he could do that. Way too risky to tower dive. And you'll see how that plays out here. He tower dives. Olaf comes in. And kills him. What he should have done is just simply back up, gank again because Volibear has no flash. Blowing a flash is completely fine in a gank. You don't always have to get a kill. 
Sometimes just being there, applying pressure, letting you CS is a great thing just for a jungler to do. So go ahead, grab more CS, poke him with Q's poke, and hit the CS at the same time. That's one big thing on Zed. If you're against casters, squishy casters, such as Lux, um, Zerath Velkaz, at this point, level 1, level 3 plus, you want to be poking them outside of the minion wave. Simply because your Q does more damage when it doesn't hit something first. Right here I'm stopping Volibear's back. Why am I stopping his back? So, the main reason is that if he backs, if he goes to base, I push this wave in to his tower, right? Push it into his tower, and he loses all this CS. I get all this CS. So it creates a small gold and experience advantage for me, and it also puts damage onto his tower. So stopping his back is important. It delays his items, it delays pretty much his whole laning experience. Um, if he keeps staying in lane and decides never to back because he doesn't want to lose those minions, um, I'll eventually just kill him. And he'll lose not only the minions, but tower damage, and he'll also give me the gold from a kill. Right here he's forced to back, um, or else he's gonna, you know, he's gonna keep taking damage he's gonna, and he's eventually gonna die. And that's the worst case scenario in a lane is dying for free. <clears throat> so carrying on, trying to poke him under tower, trying to do, you know, stop him from backing. Small lane mechanics right here. And so I WQE hard shove the wave because I know he's going to back, like he wants to back. So if I keep hard shoving this wave, I'm not going to be able to. Right, and then you just poke him under tower, just like that, throwing out Qs, throwing out Ws. Right here, since I'm pushed up in lane, right, I'm pretty far pushed up in lane. Here is the center of the lane, and you always kind of want to, this is sort of a threat zone, right? This is where junglers will gank you. And so I realize, like, I haven't seen Olaf on the map in a while. I'm pushed up. He's probably around. So I go ahead, place a ward right here. What do you know? He is. Olaf shows up. Good hunch. Something you just want to look out for. Remember there's junglers. Remember where they were on the map. And just place wards. Since I place that ward, Olaf won't gank. Volibear has to now back because I'm level 6. He will die. I'll dive him if he didn't back. Right, so Volibear backs. I push this hard shove this wave into his tower. And he loses all that CS. So we go back here, and we get a serrated dirk on a longsword. Just extra damage, lethality, good stuff, right? Walk back into lane, get as much CS as possible. Low elo, seriously, if you just focus on your CSing, focus on 10 CS per minute, even 9 CS per minute, and you will climb low elo just because of your gold advantage of getting proper CS numbers. Continue with the lane mechanics here. Um, Volibear's pushed his lane in to tower. I know he is missing, so I start pinging it. I start pinging missing. What that does is that, is that allows everyone else on the map. Um, I'm doing his backing, so it's not really a threat. Bot lane's a little overextended. Um, just a tiny bit. So he could be going bot lane. So I ping missing just to let everyone know, you know, he, he could be there. What I should be doing is pinging bot lane to back up. Because he's missing. And as you see right there, Volibear shows on the map. Right here. So he's going to gank bot lane. And at this decision, at this point, I make the decision to hard shove the wave. Right? Hard shove it into his tower. What this does is denies the CS. We chip on the tower. And we get XP. XP, gold. And you'll see how that sort of plays out into a bigger picture here. So I see him throw in bot lane, gets the kill on Janna, but Graves trades the kill back right there. So it's a one for one, it's not bad. And look, we're getting all this XP, we're getting all this gold, we're getting these tower plates, which give us even more bonus gold. 160 gold per plate. Um, it's actually a lot to think about. 
you know, two plates is pretty much a kill. A little over a kill. And we even blow his TP. He has to TP back into lane. Right? So he lost XP, gold, and his summoner. Just off of that one bad roam. Because my bot lane was back at their tower. Um, he should have just realized that, backed up, got back in the lane, got that XP, got those minions, and he wouldn't have had to blow a summoner. But as you'll see here, now he's level 6, right? He's level 6, I'm level 7. That's a huge advantage. If you don't know, a level advantage is big. Um, it's essentially like a big gold advantage. And most people don't take that into account, right? So we sit back, get the minions under tower. Don't need to fight him right yet. I know I'm a little stronger. I'm gonna hit level eight. He's level seven. So we hit level eight. And we walk back into lane, try and find him. There he is. And he tries to fight me. Gets back up, right? I don't want to fight him with a shield. There's no point fighting him when he's got a shield. Because he's just coming in with an advantage. But he tries to come in again. After this cannon tries to come in. I realize that I have a big advantage here. I'm level eight. He's level seven. I I have a serrated dirk. Um, and so I just combo him. I wait for his shield and his stun to expire. Use my R to dodge his stun, and then plus out my shadow, my W, and then we go for the E U combo. For your big damage and then just auto him um pretty good auto prox your passive gives more bonus damage because he's below 50 percent and then he just pops the death mark so it's pretty fast but um go ahead and show you right here so r w e q auto for the death passive and he pops the death mark right there so that's how you combo on zed recognizing that i have an advantage i have a level advantage he didn't know but he tried to fight me and obviously was overwhelmed by Zed's damage. Level nine now, to his level seven. All from that one bad play, guys. That one bad play where he didn't recognize that bot lane was unkillable, essentially. They're at their tower and his wave was crashing in. So he loses out on experience, which is a big one. Experience is probably the biggest thing you'll, that will put you behind in a lane by far. Gold can come and go, but experience is harder to get. And that's what put him behind so far. Essentially what made him lose this lane. And that one play I snowballed off of, I took the advantage because I realized I'm a higher level. I have more gold. I'm winning this lane. You know, I get to solo kill you. I get to roam. I get priority. There's so many things you can do just by having this lane advantage. Back up a bit here because Volibear again not understanding the level advantage, the gold advantage that I have. He walks up to its CS. I hit him with the EQ, right? Just R, auto, E, and he's dead, right? Pops to the death mark. Simply from not understanding that he's very far behind and he can't just walk up to CS or he will die. A good player will just punish you. You're behind for any CS. Walk up top here, spell cost doesn't overextend, so I just end up getting the crab. Um, XP, gold, it's always good to just grab what you can, because I have nothing else to do. Um, my lane's not pushed, my way. I'll grab the crab, come back into lane, see if I can find someone, place a ward. I don't really see Olaf anywhere, so I just push this wave out. And carry on with being a fed Zed at this point. And so... The game carries out, <clears throat> and we run bot lane, right? We run bot lane, kill bot lane, we run top lane, we kill top lane. Once you're this fed on Zed, you want to roam and you want to transition your advantage to other lanes. So I have a big gold advantage, big XP advantage, and map advantage because there's no tower in mid lane, which means I can move all the way around here, right? Because there's no tower anymore. I can roam top. I can roam bot. Um, I can essentially do whatever I want because I'm fed. And that's what I end up doing throughout the game. 
roaming bot, transitioning my lead into other lanes and getting more advantages. Right, so we skip forward here. As we see, I'm roaming top now. Go ahead, or the Velkaz. He gets me with the, his knockout, but obviously just Q and death mark, and he's dead. Right. Folly Bear is up here, ends up killing the Heimer. I just go ahead and melt him. You know I'm stronger. Get the double kill, 4 0, um, 10 CS per minute. It's looking great right here. Gray's got the dragon because there's most of their resources was topside, so Gray's recognized that and took the free dragon. You just transition your lead from here on. It's it's sort of knowing that you're strong. Um, most people have a problem being strong. Right? Like, go down here, kill the jungler. Right? Boom. Use on Caitlyn. You know, just tra this is just transitioning that lead to bot lane. We wipe out bot lane. Clean up house. Big tower. At this point, we've won top, we've won mid, we've won bot, we've won jungle. All stemming from mid lane lead, things like that. Bot lane obviously was doing okay. Top lane didn't feed. Which is surprising, to be honest. But, got our items now. Got Yomu's, got Mortal Reminder and Elder Glaive, what I like to call the purple build. Um, I'll be explaining that further in, in other videos, but... Then we essentially snowball the game out, making picks, you know, and destroying people throughout the game because 6 and OZ, like, come on, you know, like, this is just an example of your, of the power of a FedZ. They see me coming, I deliberately hit the ward, I know he's in this bush, right, combo, dead. Things you can do on Z once you're fed. It's knowing how to get fed on Zed to win the game, and how to snowball, and how to transition to your side lanes, how to know when to roam, know when you're strong. Here I know I have my ult, I know I'm strong, I have a th literally a three level lead on this Olaf, so I can just pretty much manhandle him, even though he's got armor. Right, pop him. I do greet a little bit here with a volley bear, but I recognize it and I start backing up. Eventually he just backs off. And we get Baron, right? We push in and we end up just winning the game. All stemming from mid lane leads. From this point right here, right? Where Volley Bear roams down. I'm missing. This is the biggest point in the game and something that low elo players need to recognize. Volley Bear's roam down. His lane's pushing in. He's gonna lose all his CS. He's gonna give me tower plates. Right? And it's a bad roam. My back my bot lane's already backing off. Look how far back they are. Graves is in the area. The risk is too high. Don't tower dive. Back off. Get your minions. But he tower dives. He dies. He gives me tower plates. He gives me experience. And then from that stem of of all those mistakes, right? He gives me this kill because I'm ahead in levels. I'm ahead in gold. So I easily melt him. I get the kill. And now I'm even more ahead. And then with this lead, to win the game, with this one lead, all I do is recognize that Volley Bear is behind. And I keep killing Volley Bear. And I kill him, I think, two more times because I'm ahead. He can't get the CS. Right? And then I roam top. Then I roam bot. And then, at that point, top lane has a lead, bot lane has a lead, I have a massive lead, and we just push, 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 and end up winning the game from these little things, right? And so, that's sort of what I wanted to explain, what I wanted to highlight, is how you gain small advantages in lane to snowball and snowball and snowball, and eventually, you're unstoppable, right? The enemy team can't kill you. You're destroying them. And you're like, Whoa, is that so OP? What happened? No. It's from this tiny lead. Game knowledge, knowing what to do, pushes it further.
I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I hope you guys learned something. It's my low elo Z climbing, what to do in lane, how to snowball your leads, um, a, a few combos that you can do, what you have to do throughout level 1 to 3 to make sure you don't get too far behind, little things like that. Um, if you guys liked, comment and subscribe on this video and to the channel. And I'll surely be posting more videos just like this, explaining Z runes, Z builds, everything like that. Go in depth to help you guys to strategize to win the League of Legends games. And as always, have a good one.